Good night, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon. Uh, one thing I haven't shown real quick here is that even though we've got 100% complete, there is one egg here. There's that egg at the very bottom of that list called Egg for Sale. And now if you're confused about that, well, don't be. Don't worry about it for now, because anyway, we're going to be heading into the Crystal Islands in this episode. That is our main goal for today, and I think our only goal for today's episode, because, well... Crystal Islands are actually a pretty mm, kind of easy level, to be honest with you. Don't tell anyone There's a few things to deal with here. This is a little bit reminiscent of the uh, the Magic Crafters world from a Sparrow 1, because, well, there's a whole lot of magic things happening, like uh, exploding crystal bits and uh, flying beavers. No comment there! But yeah, so this is actually our first real foray into the uh, the actual worlds within Midnight Mountain. So I hope you're ready for it. Um, this level itself isn't too bad. You see the return of the octopi from... Or octopodes from the first... Um, like, or one of the first levels back all the way in, in Seashell Shores, if you recall, way, 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 way back at the beginning of the Let's Play. Way back. But, um... Well... No point in going way back. Let's go way forward, shall we? Yeah. So these guys explode, so you kind of want to be a little bit airborne for the most part around them. Makes your life just a tad easier. Just kind of stay airborne around them. And also, they have the little gem lamps here back from uh, from Glimmer. Also, I missed a few gems here on this, this first platform. They're just hanging around down here. They tried to hide from you. This level is actually pretty circular. And also kind of short, too. There's actually, it's not gigantic, really, at all. It's, uh, pretty short. But there's one kind of gimmick to this level here that we'll get into, well, after we finish clearing out the bottom of this lake here. Because, well, as always, gems are going to be important to us. Because even though we can already go fight uh, the final boss, the sorcerer, as well, it's kind of just best for us to keep, keep on keeping on here. No point in really making the end of the game come too quickly because we're just going to have to go for 100% eventually anyway. No point in getting it out of the way early. We'll save it for, well, until we're, we've are we done all that we can. No point in uh, no point in rushing ahead. But anyway, the main gimmick of this level is that uh, these wizards have stolen some magic and they can make magic platforms appear for a limited amount of time. And then if, if they disappear again, you just have to talk to them again. It's no big deal. You can have them come up as many times as you want. It's not really anything that challenging. I'm not sure why they thought it would be, but for whatever reason, it is the challenge here. Anyway, there's this little egg here off on the island here. Just glide to it. Again, not that complicated. Many Typical dragon. Fairly easily hidden. There's nothing really that complicated about this level, honestly. It's, uh, all things said and done, it's actually pretty, not exactly easy, but pretty simple and straightforward. There's one part that's a little bit difficult to this. Now, he is actually going to queue up a whirlwind all the way in there that lasts for a short while. No point in really talking to him before you're ready for that yet. Because, well, why would you? It's not like you're going to rush things just to get over there. Just go around and collect the gems. However, there, the one thing that you could do is you could run through the level. Because after you've gotten through the level completely the first time, all of the uh, the temporary things become permanent and you don't have to keep talking to them to cue the whirlwinds or the, the small platforms again. Even though it's not that really big of a hassle in the first place. Again, I'm not really sure exactly why they bothered, but whatever. We'll take it. We'll take it for what it's worth. I mean, the gimmick is actually that they stole it from the sorceress. And that's why they have to hide it, I guess. I'm not really sure, but whatever the deal is. Let's get that whirlwind activated. Let's get rising up. Let's get out of here, shall we? So yeah, he starts up the whirlwind. We can use the whirlwind to glide our way up and over the top of the level to go, I don't know, fight more things. And then Moneybags is here, of course. Moneybags is going to charge you a lot, by the way, in this last world, should you decide to play it. Play it all the way through. 
If you're not going for 100%, well, obviously you might be tempted to go towards the end of the game already, and that'll also help you avoid some money bags things. Because you can see he's charging us a thousand gems right there for that. That's a pretty expensive bridge. Even for money bags, it's standard. It's pretty freaking expensive. Just a little bit. We've got another, uh, another one of the wizards here to help us with his magical powers, or our magical powers, or no, his magical powers. But, of course, you want to probably take out everything in the lake before you would ever go cue that, because what's the point? These, these beavers can be a bit of a pain in the butt to kill, but I don't think there's actually an easier way, even if you weren't as stubborn as me, to not use the rocks. I don't think there's any rocks or anything actually here. I do think you have to jump and glide and hit them that way. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but, uh, well, it's like the one challenging thing about this level, I guess. Some of the mini games can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, though, but, well, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's funny, because. But. We'll, we'll get to the mini games in a little bit, though. Let's, let's focus on completing the level first, though, shall we? How about that? That seems like a good idea, doesn't it? Doesn't it? One more of the little platforms. Again, really just not. A, a weird uh, it's just a weird one-off thing or two off I guess because now they have that here you can have this and then we get the egg he gives us Lloyd from mother one I guess and we can move on with our lives now there's a couple other things actually left hidden in the home world here or not the home world uh, the rest of the level here so don't forget about those things that are hidden you should probably want to do your best to go get them before you jump in. There's a couple of things for the your uh, gliding around pleasure. There was one of the missions over to the side. That one was obviously the uh, the portal back to the main world. They gave, they gave us a nice locked chest here. We're getting that one out of the way early, apparently. And then there's a Bentley level here as well that you have to have unlocked. Because, well, you have to have Bentley unlocked at the end of this way. Anyway, there's another egg thief here who actually can fly around. A little bit reminiscent of uh, of the ending of Spyro 1. For those of you who have played that. Uh, I wound up cutting him off here. It didn't actually really take that long. I just kind of flew around like once and just cut him off when he came out from the back of these rocks here. Yeah, just do what I do. Not bad. You could probably even just take him out with a star if you're really good. That timing seemed to work really, really well. I mean, as you can see, there wasn't even a cut there. I just straight up just kept it because I was going to cut it. And I was like, what's the point? It was only like 10 seconds. It's only 10 seconds. Anyway, we get a super fly power up here. There's a couple of things we need to do with this. Uh, the, the first one here is up to get this egg. But what I recommend doing is actually flying and not doing what I do, but actually fly a little bit higher because the, there is a the key, which is only a little bit further up. And then you just platform your way back down. Because you can't get the key once you've landed here now and the and the power-up's gone away. Because I think the power-up goes away by default whenever you uh, you rest up. The key, as you can see, is on that little pedestal up there. So we will have to get the power-up again to come back here. Because, well, you need to. If you want 100% the level. I mean, you could not 100% the level. I just like seeing all the little uh, lamps from from Glimmer everywhere because those are kind of neat, kind of little memories of Spyro 2 way back when. I don't actually know when the last time I played Spyro 2 was. It might have honestly been the Let's Play. I actually legitimately have no idea. Anyway, we finally got the key, so let's just fly straight over and unlock that now. And uh, well, I guess eventually start tackling the mini games because that's probably a decent idea. Right? Right. Chest unlocked with the key going in backwards as apparently per usual. We get a whole bunch of gems. A whole bunch of gems. And, uh, well... Let's go see what Bentley has to offer. Because that should be fun. And, uh, well, yeah, for those of you who don't know, there's, only, there's two missions here. They're both only one egg. And a significant portion of our gems are actually... Actually in there. I'm still missing a few, I think, in the main world, but, well, we'll collect those in a little bit. Anyway, this is the Bentley minigame. It's a pretty much a big pain in the ass, to be completely honest. It took me actually quite a while to do, 
And yeah, as you can see here with the, the whole thing where the, the later levels have so many gems, they're just hiding gems basically in plain sight and in, in these giant things just so they can... I mean, that was, what, close to 100 right there probably? Just because they literally have so many gems they need to hide, they just shove them all in the same spot. Because why wouldn't they? I'm afraid my magic show seems to... Yeah. Okay. Whatever. We'll, we'll bash some moles. It's, it's whack-a-mole. So, yeah. You have to not bash the wizards and bash uh, the little... Those guys. It's It gets a little complicated. And if you fail this, it's almost always because I bash the wizards. I've never really run... I don't run at a time that frequently. Even though I come really close to it, which is what causes me to panic and then dash the wizards. But still, my point still stands. Also, try not to stand directly over the holes. If, you st if you're standing directly over the holes, they will pop right out and, and uh, pop you into the air, which means that you can't actually swing down for a little bit. So it's, it's a little bit... Um, uh, it's a little bit of the not quite what you want to do to be completely honest But one thing as well as that I found is that you're if you're going to succeed at this you're going to do it basically right away Yeah, see I was about to run out of time there and I just whacked the uh, the, the, the the wizard in just hopes That it would have actually been the mole because I could have won it the first time But it took me several more tries But as I was saying is that if you manage to do it it usually actually winds up happening pretty quickly like, I think the time I actually beat it, and as I said, it took several tries. I beat it, and I still had some double-digit number of seconds left on the clock. It's really just how lucky you can get with the spawns, especially if you just are like me and a little bit whack-crazy. I almost lost it there. Because I'm pretty sure I pushed the button, and it actually just didn't go through. And I was, like, really pleased about that. Also, and you can whack two of them at the same time, should you get yourself the uh, opportunity to do so. And that's a pretty good way to whack up your score. Whack up your score. Nice. Perfect. Accidental, uh, I want to say accidental typos. Yeah, see, I got two at the same time. If you can get them like that, that's pretty good. Yes. Like, I had almost 18 seconds left on this clock. If you can get it, you can get it pretty easily. Happens pretty well. We got Hank. No propane or propane accessories for us, though. Anyway, let's progress uh, and just get all of the leftover gems because, well, there's a lot of them just kind of out here around the thing. Not that many because, of course, they shoved all of the, the big ones over there, so they just left us a couple little ones. They got really weird with the gem placement in these last couple worlds, and I'm not sure why because it's not very balanced, like, at all. As you can see here, we're literally just getting, like, ones and twos. I don't know what they were doing, but, uh, well, whatever. It is what it is. Let's get out of here. Let's move on to our second mini game, which, if I'm recalling the correct one, it is, is a little bit more on the, uh, I want to say the crazy side, but that's not completely true. It's more on the annoying side, for sure. Because in this, uh, <laughs> Excuse me. In this last world, they got a little bit of a hard on for uh, slides. Yeah, slides. Oops. And I just straight up just accidentally walked out the level there. You know, no, I don't want to do the slides, man. Let's just not. Slides are a pain in the butt. Uh, once you step on the slide, you can no longer jump or anything, and you're kind of just limited just to weird icy physics like controls. And to make matters worse, of course, there are gems on the slide. And so I wound up actually completing the slide, but not having all the gems, which meant I had to go backtrack. Which is why it's good to have sparks in as good of health as you possibly can, so that, uh... You know, if you're like me, you can actually try to, to get all of the gems. Oh boy. This level. And yes, this does count against your life count, by the way, so be careful. I've got plenty of game overs to this. Plenty, plenty of game overs to this. It, it's not fun to be honest could go a lot more smoothly and They got very upset with these. I think there's three of these throughout the game and they're all like here like within this last world 
certainly not the best decision. But regardless, we are almost actually through this first one here. Except for the fact that we still have a ton of gems. Or not really a ton, but there's still a few gems left. Because obviously the ideal way is to have Spyro collect them yourself. But uh, just the way it works, that can't always happen. We got the egg. That's it. And if you're wondering where this uh, this portal takes us, well, it actually takes us back to the uh, the exact same spot we were in. There's still gems up there, unfortunately. So if you if you got the portal, it actually just takes you right back to um, the place where you walked in in the actual level. So if you walk in now, you're back at the top of the slide again, which means you have to do this all over again. Thankfully for us and our sanity, I cut some of this up so that we could have uh, a little bit more of a decent time doing this. I think it took me like, like three or four tries or something like that down the slide. And by the way, no, when you fall off the slide, you still cannot jump and glide. Still can't do it. But anyway, I think that's actually just about it for the gems. Yeah, I fell off and I was like, nope, not doing that again. We're getting out of here. No point staying. There's 10 gems, I think, and they're actually one more thing that you need the, the power up for. Because if you look, they're on top of the, the exit right where we were. They're all the way up. So yeah, let's just go get the power up and go get those. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's difficult to miss, but eh, that's why it's helpful to have sparks. And that's it. 700 out of sun 700. Well, that's a pretty nice chunk of change. Level complete. Well, let's get out of here, shall we? And, uh, well, move on to the next one. Because that'll be a good thing. Right? Right. Level complete.